Hey guys, it's Lissa Mahalik at somaticanatomy.com. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about some divisions of the nervous system that are super important, especially if, say, you might be stressed out or you might have stressed out clients. Anybody? Anybody? Anyhow, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this image here. There is it. There you go. So in, my, in the weekly class with Carnegie Mellon, I am taking a look at, I found this great image of the central nervous system. So that go away, make this a little clearer. All right, whatever, not gonna worry about it right now. So <clears throat> here we have the central nervous system. This is, Honestly, there you can see how their structure and function action here is a little sketchy. They got a little confused down here because, frankly, the nervous system is confusing. And while I'm pleased to see that I'm not the only one that gets confused about the nervous system, that also makes it a little difficult to be super organized about organizing the nervous system. And you know that the nervous system is all about organization. So I am going to help you out with talking you through this image because it does get a little bit confusing. And then we're going to go into specifically the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. So the sympathetic division being your fight or flight reflex, that's where it lives. And the parasympathetic being your rest and digest reflex. Can't do them both at the same time. Are you stressed out? Do you have digestive issues? This is why. Anyhow. So, we're going to start up, up here with the central nervous system, the CNS, because everybody loves, everybody loves abbreviations if you're talking about all these different nervous systems. In the words of the poet, saying all those words over and over again can really get you down. Well, I suppose that was pronouns. Anyhow, so central nervous system, also known as the CNS, the structure is up here at the top. This is the brain and the spinal cord. Those are the structures of the central nervous system. And their jobs are to be the integrative and the control centers more or less, for the purposes of this discussion. And the little blue arrows, so the blue is input, the red is output. And I'll, we'll, we'll get more into that in just a second, but we're not going there yet. So there's input, there's output from the peripheral nervous system. If the central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system is what is commonly known as all those other nerves. So that would be the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, any other nerves there are, that would be the peripheral nervous system because they're on the periphery, on the edge. So structures, cranial nerves, spinal nerves. Function is the communication lines between the central nervous system and everything else. So here's where we start getting the arrows, like the arrow in, the arrow out. The afferent nerves, afferent with an A, come in. So they, they allow the information to enter through the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system. So from the sensory or the afferent division of the peripheral nervous system is what takes in the information to the central nervous system. So, and here's where the top, the top one should be green because the structure of the sensory or afferent division of the nervous system would be the somatic and the visceral sensory nerve fibers. So the, the nerves that come in from the nerve fiber, or the, the nerve fibers that come in from your viscera, and the somatic division, actually not using the word somatic in the way that I often use the term somatic to talk about the, the, the mind-body connection. Although now that I've said that, you probably could, because this connects the information from the body to the central nervous system eventually, to the mind. Here it is, here's the body-mind connection right here if we're gonna be facetious about it. Anyhow, so the somatic division is basically the muscular division. That's more or less the voluntary ner nervous system. And the sensory fibers from your internal organs and from your muscles come in. That's your sensory, your afferent division, come in along this blue arrow, through your peripheral nervous system into your central nervous system. Boom. So then your central nervous system takes all that information, processes it, and sends responses right back out through your peripheral nervous system and out your 
motor division, your efferent division. Efferent with an E because E is also how you spell exit. The efferent is the exit. So hopefully that helps. That's my personal favorite mnemonic for this one. So the structures, ignoring the key here, the structures of the motor nerve fibers. So any nerve that is actually both a voluntary and involuntary, anything that takes direction from the brain, not all of our brain stuff or even our, our central nervous system stuff is voluntary. Reflexes, entirely involuntary. They go straight to the spinal cord, the spinal cord kicks it right back without ever bothering with the brain. So all the motor nerve fibers, meaning anything that transmits information from the central nervous system to everything else and causes motion, that's the motor or the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system. And its function is to conduct the impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors, essentially the things that make effects, the things that make stuff happen. So your muscles, your glands, etc. So your motor division splits off into two because these are the, in, the output from your central nervous system comes down and that output goes into both your somatic nervous system, here's the somatic nervous system, and the structure being the somatic motor nerves, the voluntary somatic motor nerves, the function being to conduct those impulses from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscles. So the somatic nervous system down here is part of the motor or efferent division of the peripheral nervous system, which talks to, which gets information from the central nervous system. Make sense? Hope so. And then we get into, so the somatic nervous system here is basically, okay, we move. We make things happen. The autonomic nervous system, now, the easy way to remember it is that autonomic is automatic. Yes, yes, not everything blah de blah de blah but for the most part, it's a pretty good catch-all and helps you to remember what the autonomic nervous system does. Because you've got all of these different divisions, it gets effing confusing, just saying. So, again, information comes into the motor division and can go either to the somatic or the autonomic nervous system. These are the visceral motor nerves. This is the structures of the autonomic nervous system, the visceral motor nerves. And these aren't the ones like, okay, hey, go digest stomach, beat heart, because let me tell you how quickly that would get old and how long we'd survive. Not very. So we don't have to tell them to do the thing. Muscles, you know, wave your arms while you talk, great. Stomach digest, it can take care of that on its own, and I'm really happy about it. So the autonomic nervous system, its function is to conduct the impulses from the central nervous system through the peripheral nervous system and the motor division through the autonomic division to the cardiac muscles, the smooth muscle, the organ muscle, and glands. And because we're not done yet, the autonomic nervous system, for the purposes of this graph, <coughs> excuse me, is divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions, and that is what I want to get into a little bit more today. Um, not too much more, because we're going to keep it short and sweet, but this is exciting stuff, and we talk about it all the time because we experience this stuff all the time. Your sympathetic division, this is the fight and flight. So this mobilizes your body systems during, your, during activity, it says, or during hyperarousal. You see the tiger, your sympathetic division is like, we are out of here, we're not getting eaten by the tiger, we're gone. So everything you need to move fast, it's up there. So your heart gets, you know, your heart starts beating, you start breathing more to get more oxygen in, actually you get more blood service to your brain so you can think enough to like, okay, what am I doing, where am I going? And that gets you moving. Like that's, you know, when you, that's the eustress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S, E-S-S, that's like the good advantages cause, cause, because you're at the top of your game. It can be really exciting to have that, to have your sympathetic division going. You're like, yeah, I'm in this. I'm on top of this. I am rocket fueled. Everything is awesome. But you also need to relax. You need your parasympathetic division down here. So this is 
its actions are to, or its functions in the terminology of this, of this chart, um, are to conserve energy. It, call, it talks about housekeeping functions. So you digest housekeeping functions, you pee, you poo. Thing, things like tears are actually parasympathetic. You might find sometimes if you're having a massage, it's getting really deep and deeply relaxing that tears start running out of your eyes. That's just because you are so into your parasympathetic nervous system. It is totally okay. It's kind of awesome, actually. Like, oh, wow, there goes my parasympathetic nervous system. What a great trigger. So <clears throat> as we move on here, so here, is, here are the actions of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. You get excited, you get in all rocket fuel, you're like, yeah, let's go. Or, oh my gosh, it's a tiger, I'm out of here. <laughs> that is your sympathetic division here. From the top, it, it dilates your pupils. So you get that, like, if any of you guys have cats and you, you can see how the pupils get really big right before the cat has a cat fit and starts shredding your arm, pay attention to that. That means Kitty's sympathetic system is kicking up. It's a thing. So with us, you know, we have the tear glands that are just maintaining the eye moisture. They're not actually dripping. The tear glands are doing basically the bare minimum they have to do. I love this inhibition of excess salivary secretion. You're not drooling. You're not like, mmm, food. Because that is linked to, I want to eat. It's not linked to run away from the tiger. The tiger, not tasty. You're going to run. So since you are running, you're going to need an accelerated heart rate. It constricts your arterioles. It constricts some of those extra blood vessels to the outside because you want your blood, you want your heart, and you want your lungs, and you want your brain really super bathed in oxygen and all those good things. <clears throat> it dilates the bronchi. So all those tubes in your lungs get bigger so you can take in more air. And your respiratory rate's going to go up, which is not in this, because you need to get more oxygen in. You're creating more carbon dioxide because you're probably, you know, in theory, when you're running from that tiger, you're creating more carbon dioxide, more waste products in your blood that you need to get out as fast as possible. And your breathing helps you do that. It inhibits stomach motility and secretion, inhibits your pancreas and adrenals. Oh, that's interesting because a lot of times... A lot of times what I hear is that your adrenals get busy and that starts kicking on your sympathetic nervous system response. And this is why anatomy is confusing because sometimes people try to simplify it a little too much. But we're, we're just going with what's on the chart right now. And the important thing about that chunk right down here is that you stop digesting. That and down here inhibits intestinal motility. When you're running from the tiger, you don't need to stop to poo. This is important. Run from tiger, poo later. So that kicks up, your, when your sympathetic division kicks up, you stop digesting properly because you don't need to digest. You need to get the hell away from the tiger. You've got, you've got energy reserves in different places for your body. You don't need to break down food to, you don't need to like break down the food and take it to the muscles. No, 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 your muscles have reserves for that. That's what it's for. Like that's what the adrenaline is for, actually, just saying. I don't know why the hell adrenals are on this list. But anyhow, I'll find out. I'll let you know. <laughs> and it relaxes the bladder, which you might think, like, oh, my gosh, it's relaxing. Is that going to make me pee? No, it relaxes the bladder itself so you can hold more pee. So, again, you don't have to stop to pee while you're running from the tiger. This is important. Now, the interesting thing here, gentlemen, and those of us who are in these situations with gentlemen is that the sympathetic division is what stimulates ejaculation. And if you look on the other side, it's the parasympathetic division that stimulates erection. So if someone you know might be having difficulties with erection, he probably needs to get in touch with his parasympathetic division. He may be too much in the sympathetic division. Just saying, because without parasympathetic action, Ain't nothing, ain't nothing looking up, let's put it that way. Things to keep in mind. So once you run away from the tiger and you can relax, then you can go over to your parasympathetic division. Your pupils will constrict, showing that, okay, I'm calmer now. 
okay, your tear glands. You ever been in a situation where you've been so freaked out you forget to cry until it's over? That's because your sympathetic division is kicking on so hard that your parasympathetic parasympathetic division couldn't get in there to stimulate those tear glands. And again, crying after the event is actually kind of a good sign. It's like, oh, thank God, there's my parasympathetic system. Thanks, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Because you need the high energy, but you also need recuperation. And parasympathetic is all about recuperation. This is where we go when we hang out in meditation. Meditation is all about talking with your parasympathetic nervous system. This is why paras oh, this is why meditation is so good for so many things, because sometimes we get really imbalanced. We get super sympathetic. We don't have that parasympathetic balance. So if you're not meditating, if you're not doing some sort of mindfulness, if you hate sitting and meditating, do some Tai Chi, do some moving meditation. I train Kung Fu when my back allows me to. So there are ways to do moving meditations that do not involve sitting on a cushion saying, oh, my God, if that's not your thing. If it is your thing, more power to you. It's a beautiful thing. But on to the rest. So this is where you get the strong simulation of sal salivary flow. You're like, I'm hungry. My mouth is watering. Let's go eat something. Yeah. And you know, it constricts your bronchi, bronchi so that you're not <sighs> taking these huge breaths anymore, which is kind of important. Your digestive juices get, start moving, your intestines start moving, and your bladder contracts. So this is where it's time to pee. You're like, ah, oh, now I've escaped from the, now I've escaped from the tiger. Stimulates erection. And by the way, for those of us who don't have penises, um, should you have a clitoris or a clitoris similar tissue, it's the same thing. Like clitoral erection, it's a thing. It happens. It's just not as big and showy, so it doesn't get noticed as often. So those of us with non penile tissues, we can still get erections. You just can't tell. We're just a little more quiet about it. I'm just saying. So when the tiger goes away, we can rest, we can eat, we can take care of the housekeeping functions, get rid of all that pee and poo from the eating and the digesting. And we can say like, oh, hey, you're kind of cute. I'm glad we both escaped the tiger. So, you know, and we'll draw a curtain over the rest of what happens. So parasympathetic, sympathetic division, here's what they do, here's how they work. I hope you have enjoyed this. I'm gonna say, go forth and enjoy your anatomy. Thanks for joining in. That was a lot longer than the usual one, but I hope it was really super helpful because I really enjoy talking about the nervous system because there's so much of it going on. And it's also really super helpful when you are thinking about working with the body and the mind because the nervous system is basically your connection between the body and the mind. Just saying. Neuroendocrine system, if you want to get picky, but more on that later. Enjoy your anatomy. I'll see you next week. Or I'll see you online. And there we are. All right. I will still see you online and I'll still see you next week. Enjoy your anatomy. <laughs>